What's going on everyone and welcome back to another spotlight video. This one is a little special. I um as we all know or as some of you may know, the Overwatch anniversary rolled around the Tuesday just gone. That is a year of probably one of my favorite games of all time and I've played it consistently for that entire year, which is a damn good achievement on both Blizzard's part to keep me interested for that long and my part to stay interested in such a unique game from the get-go. So, with the release of the new event and the various skins and stuff that came with it, I thought I would go over five of the Overwatch skins that have some explaining to do in terms of the in-game lore. The skins that don't quite fit with the characters' personas and really just what the fuck on occasion. If you do enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and we'll get straight into this. First up, we have the brand new Genji skin, Sentai. Costing you a grand total of 3,000 credits as per usual, this skin is interesting. Now as a kid, we all loved the Power Rangers. I was young enough that I barely remember it if I'm being honest, but the general agreement is that Power Rangers is awesome, right? That's all well and good Genji, but why the sudden need for a very bright green makeover that also has the notable addition of what kind of look like antennas? I mean, they're obviously not antennas, they're probably there for like aerodynamic purposes? Maybe, but for the life of me, I can't see why one of the world's best ninjas needs an outfit that literally does the opposite of everything needed to remain covert and stealthy. I mean, the outfit adds about another foot to his height, for crying out loud. <laughs> that being said, it does look fucking epic. And for that reason, I'd love to have some history behind it. Maybe it was a spur of the moment purchase, a bargain bin at Comic-Con, Genji, maybe? And why pick a suit so likely to get copyrighted by whoever made that epic childhood show? I actually have a theory that Genji is in fact the Green Power Ranger. Who knows, but I'd love to find out the backstory behind this one. Next up we have the new Tracer skin, Graffiti. This one is probably one of my favourite skins in the game now. The new Tracer skin gives off an air of rebelism, is that a word? Probably not, but an air of rebelism anyway that I find quite charming in such an interesting character. That being said, it is completely at odds with what Tracer stands for. An ex-military veteran who later joins Overwatch, she must, must have a stringent opinion of the rules and making sure they're followed. But she also does graffiti. I mean, assuming the graffiti is indeed illegal in Overwatch, it doesn't make much sense, does it? While graffiti is inherently cool, it seems far more like something maybe Sombra would get up to in her spare time, or maybe when Reaper wants to just let his art say side out, maybe? Maybe the military was the only way to keep Tracer's more carefree habits, like graffitiing, in check. Who knows, and that is why I would love to find out. Also, how on earth do these new guns work? Pretty sure the last time I checked, spray paint doesn't exactly cause extremely triggering and fatal deaths. And probably doesn't survive being dragged backwards in time either, but hey ho. Next up we have Soldier 76's new skin, Cyborg 76. This one is just plain confusing. I, I do get the whole cyber vibe of the new event, and most of the skins still kind of fit with the assured character designs, but so Soldier 76 now doesn't have any legs. Well, you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant. Di did, did he never have legs? I mean, we see him in trousers and boots, so it's perfectly possible he was all robot and augmented under that shit, but it doesn't seem particularly likely, does it? He is a military veteran and a rogue vigilante, so it's definitely feasible to imagine him losing some limbs down the line, but where? When and why, and other words beginning with W. I personally think that we need... An no, I demand that we get a Beach Dad costume with him in like red Baywatch shorts to definitely prove whether he normally has legs or something. Next up we have Blackbeard Torbjorn's skin. I love this skin, you love this skin, everyone loves this skin quite frankly, but does anyone know why it exists? I mean, even if we ignore the fact that Blackbeard died centuries ago and ignore the fact that he definitely wasn't German- Swedish. Like, after all that, why would Torbjorn be masquerading as a pirate? It's not like it's just the majestic beard that sort of draws the comparison either. He has a fucking steering wheel on his back, and it fucking spins. I don't care what the backstory is for this skin. I just want it, like, right now. The last skin on today's list is the Zenyatta's Nutcracker skin. Zenyatta is in possession of some of the finest skins in the game, not to mention the most majestic. So why on earth is the Nutcracker a thing? Like, inside the game, not outside where we get Christmas and Halloween skins for, like, events. Like, what in the game is the, like, what is the game's explanation for this admittedly hilarious skin? Is he a massive fan of Russian ballet or just a really guilty fan of terrible Barbie films? 
I feel like we, as a community, deserve a satisfying reason for this costume's existence. Like, where did he even find walnuts that damn massive? And why does he now possibly possess the most creepy face in Overwatch? Besides Anna, but we don't talk about that face. I don't know, I look at this skin and it just confuses me, and I'd really like an explanation, Blizzard. Get on that right now. That is it for today's video, though, guys. This is a sort of a less serious, a less sort of abject point of view take on just gaming in general. Usually I do my spotlight videos based around like top 10 RPGs, my favourite shooters, etc, etc. But today, to celebrate the Overwatch anniversary, I figured I'd do something a little bit different. So if you have enjoyed, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. My name's been Dodge Gaming, you've all been awesome, and peace! This to yourself. She looked at me, and this is what she said. Oh, there ain't no rest for the wicked. Money don't grow on trees. I got bills to pay.